It is a quarter past two. It's Andy in the afternoon. And Life Stories, we do this every afternoon around about this time. Your opportunity to just hear from somebody else who's do, done something interesting in their life. And I would say, in this per- personal case, I would say brave. Done something brave in their life. Because I think when you decide what you want to do in your life, and then you train for it, and then you get a job doing it, I mean, that's it, isn't it? It's an amazing feeling. And then you do it for 25 years. And then the amazing feeling wears off a bit, doesn't it, at that point? So what you're going to do is hear from a woman who has a familiar voice. I'm not going to tell you who she is just yet, Um, So, but I'll leave it as that, a familiar voice. 25 years, she did the same job and then woke up one morning and thought, why do I really want to carry on doing this? I mean, I'm telling her story, to be honest. It's better if she tells it. So let's welcome BBC Radio Nottingham's former newsreader stroke presenter, Pip Watts. Oh my goodness. Hello. What an introduction. How does the studio work? I've forgotten. (laughs) It's so strange. Wow. Um, Yeah, it's been 18 months since I I left these pastures, Andy. Yep. Why? I mean, I I said you woke up one morning and thought, what am I doing this for? Was it like that or was it not like that? It was a little bit organic. I, I think I hit a birthday that didn't begin with three or four and just thought, do you know what? I love BBC Radio Nottingham. I've loved my past life as a journalist working for other organisations as well. But to do it, like you say, it was almost 30 years, actually, in the end. And I just thought... And in lockdown, I'd started doing a bit of voluntary work. Whilst I was here at Radio Nottingham, I was doing some voluntary work in my home life and met some wonderful older people, a gorgeous Indian lady called Shashi, who's one of my neighbours. Never spoken to her before in my life. And lockdown, of course, we all started speaking to it each other that, a little bit didn't more. It did yeah, there, there are lots of negatives about what happened during COVID, but there are lots of positives too. And we became friends and I started doing her shopping and helping her with things. And she's a most gracious, wonderful woman. And then it led me to do a little bit more volunteering. I started volunteering at the vaccine centre, the Lenton Lane one, where I used to work when I worked in telly for Central News. And the first round of those vaccines, Andy, if you remember, it was like the over 80s. And so many people were so poorly. They were so lonely. It it really shocked me. And I ended up leaving BBC Radio Nottingham, not for any awful reason, just because I thought, you know, there's so much more that I want to do. And I knew that it involved older people, but I didn't know what. But that's brave, isn't it? When you, mm. when all you've known is journalism, really, for yeah. all that time, yeah. to go right, I'm just going to give it up, and I've not, I've not got any great plan. <laughs> I know. I've, not, I've not, I don't really know what I'm going yeah. to do. You that's know, brave. It, well, it, yeah. I mean, it sort of is looking back at the time. I just, it was such a strange period those early days of the lockdown, and I, I sort of thought, you know what, Pip, I'm going to jump off this diving board and and do it because everything is so weird and peculiar. And, you know, I'm obviously used to a regular salary, not a very big one here at the BBC, but nonetheless a regular salary. And I was just going from that to to nothing. And I literally had a light bulb moment amongst the working in the vaccine centre with seeing so many older people and helping them get their coats off, helping roll up their sleeves, listening to their stories about how lonely they are. And had a light bulb moment because I came across an advert um, saying, could you teach fitness to older people? And I thought, you know, I could teach fitness to older people. I couldn't teach fitness to anyone under 50, (laughs) but I could teach fitness to older people. And so it took me on a journey. And I signed up for this wonderful course, Move It or Lose It. And because if you don't move it, you lose it, as, as we know. And thought, you know, it just felt so right. And so I started learning online about the human body and how we work, how how we get fit, how we keep our fitness. Because after the age of 30, this is depressing. Our muscles start to waste, our bone density decreases. And, you know, the proof there, all these 80-year-old people who, who could barely walk into the vaccine centre because they'd not really done much for several months... Um, I thought, no, this feels right. So off I went on this fitness instructor course. Wow. Uh, I mean, one thing I do remember about you is you were mega into things like boot camp, weren't you? So you you enjoyed doing a bit of fitness yourself. I enjoyed it, strangely. I'm rubbish at it. (laughs) And I I would say now that I'm not rubbish at at this job, um, but it's hard. It's hard keeping fit. And I always threw myself into boot camp, so I'd be down in the dirt trying to do 10 press-ups in the wet and the cold in my local park. I do a bit of running. Again, I am the worst runner in my group, but it doesn't matter because it's all about getting up and doing it and moving it absolutely um so 
yeah, I passed my instructor exams in December, so just, you know, six months ago. And here I am teaching fitness classes around Nottinghamshire. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll talk more about what those fitness classes involve and the kind of uh, buzz it gives you yeah. <laughs> in just a moment on BBC Radio Nottingham. And today, somebody you might remember, Pip Watts, who used to read the news here at BBC Radio Nottingham, do a bit of presenting as well, uh, and gave it all up um, 18 months or so ago. And she was just telling you that she has sort of at first didn't know what to do, but has ended up uh, teaching fitness to older people particularly. I have. And do you know what's strange, Andy? I, I, I thought, oh, God, this is, go this is going into an industry I know nothing about. How will I ever do anything? I mean, yes, I did a little bit of boot camp and a little bit of fitness in my personal life, but I am not super fit. I am not super toned, but I, I understand the importance of keeping fit. And I was worried, thinking, how will I, how will I do this? How will I share the information and the love? And it's there's a lot of crossover, actually, between between the job I had because you are essentially performing in front of people except they're looking at you now you're not in a room by yourself talking into a sponge you're actually being watched and you're also listening to people because a lot of the people that come through my doors into my classes are are quite lonely and you know, so is, it, is it as much about meeting people yeah, and chatting to them and absolutely talking about life as and it they, is about the exercise they have got such incredible life stories and it's only recently i've thought you know the crossover between my life as a journalist and my life as a fitness instructor is actually quite quite close just that listening to people and being there for people um in fact after some of our classes we start to have a, a cup of tea and a piece of cake <laughs> after class because it's it can be an occasion for people that they they not been going out much because of covid and now they're suddenly getting confidence again they feel like they want to meet more people in their community so they come to my exercise class i don't like to call it exercise movement class and um, then we all sit around and have a cup of tea and a piece of cake and <laughs> talk about life and it's wonderful you've got some props i noticed what have I you got down there actually, yeah do, do you fancy a bender ball a what yeah look here we go <laughs> put this now put this okay. bender ball between your thighs it's a okay. squeezy ball right yeah do i need to stand up no you can sit down okay and give it a squeeze okay. go oh, on right, okay. squeeze squeeze and what do you just keep doing it keep doing it squeeze now hold it a little bit longer yeah yeah, can you feel a little bit of leg oh, tremble? Yeah, yeah. yeah, now take those two batons, pipe lagging from um, <laughs> a, a DIY store, cut into two foam batons. Now give that ball a bash. Go on, drum it. Yeah, three minutes of that in class. Whoa, three minutes? Yeah, well, we do it to things like, you know, like Queen, We Will Rock You. Right. Bang, bang, up. Bang, bang, up. Bang, bang, up. That's it. That's it. You know, we do yeah, okay. fun stuff like that and we do other things. So we might do drumming. We use squeezy balls. <laughs> we've got pom-poms. We go cheerleading. We d There's nothing we can't do. It doesn't age is just a number, you I, know? I'll tell you what, I honestly thought that was going to be nothing. You know, yeah. I do a bit of jogging. I don't do a lot of exercise, yeah. but I do a bit of jogging. And actually, <laughs> ke keeping my legs squeezing the ball. Yeah, you've got a, li you've after got a about little After 30 purple. seconds, it was quite hard. It is. And then bashing it with these things. Yeah. I think because they're long. Yeah. Well, you don't realise it's using a muscle I obviously don't use for anything else, you know? You could be an instructor, Andy. There you go. Now, you see, pass me these foam batons back. Okay. Because another thing I use them for. So this week in class, we've been doing imaginary. We're going on a journey around the world because it's our holiday time. So we went on a journey, we went to Spain, we went to France, We all different music, all different pieces of equipment, and then we ended up in the southwest of England and we danced to the Wurzels, oh, Combine wow. Harvester, and we did the Combine Harvester. <laughs> We did the combine harvester, roly poly, roly poly, and you're really using your muscles. There we go with our with our with our sticks here, our foam batons. And, and th did you have the music as well? We did have the music. Ah, okay. I enjoy playing all different types of music, and people always say at the end of the class, "Oh, I love the music, I love the music," because I just pick all sorts of music from down the decades. And again, it's you know, if people, it doesn't matter if people are getting the left foot and the right foot wrong. It's not choreography. It's just really simple, effective. And believe me, it has to be simple for me. Simple, effective movement to bring back some muscle, to bring back some strength in our bodies, because you know we we do start to lose it from the depressingly from the age of about yeah. thirty. Um, and it's 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 a wonderful journey, and people have already started saying to me in my class, "Do you know what, Pip? I couldn't do this. I can look, look what I can do. Look what I can do. I can lift my leg for twenty seconds," and they couldn't do you know they couldn't do it a few weeks ago. How rewarding do you find it? I can tell you find it rewarding because just talking about it, you're you're buzzing, yeah. aren't you? But why why do you think that is? Um, it's 
it, it's, it's make, and it sounds it sounds cheesy. It's making a difference uh, to people's lives, but in an actual way that you can see that they are improving. They're happier. They're less lonely, and they're fitter. And mental health. The, the, the physical benefits are incredible, but the mental health benefits for exercise, I think it's something it's still being researched, but all the evidence shows that movement is brilliant, no matter what disease or condition or long-term ailment you may have, but it's also brilliant for your mental health. And for me to see people come to life in my classes and say, I haven't heard that track for ages, I found myself dancing, I was back, you know, I was back at Ritzy in my head doing this. And it's, it's just wonderful to make a difference to people's lives. And like I say, it sounds cheesy, but it's brilliant. So, you know, come along to a Move It or Lose It class because we've got them all over Nottinghamshire, Mansfield Woodhouse in the north and then in the east. Um, we've And then in South Knots, where I teach, just go online and look at Move It or Lose It. And then you can click on uh, a button called Find a Class and you'll see where your nearest class is. But I'd love it if people came along. Come along and we'll have a laugh and we'll yeah. have a chat and we'll get you fit. Well, it's been nice to have a chat this afternoon. You Pip, come into my class. Catch up. Maybe I will. Yeah. I mean, I need to perfect my ball squeezing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Pip Watts on BBC Radio Nottingham. <laughs>